In another exciting motion graphics tutorial, we're gonna dive deep into motion graphics and talk about four circle burst techniques. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So we're diving in very specifically into the realm of motion graphics in the form of circle burst. So it's really specific, but knowing how to do these type of motion graphics can really spruce up your work and allow you to create an awesome project. For our first circle burst technique, we're gonna create a line repeater. So here's the general idea of what we'll be creating in this video and you'll be able to bring all these elements together to create one awesome composition. And if you want to follow along with this tutorial a little bit more closely, you can check our links in the video description and download this project file. We're going to create a line repeater and what we can do here is grab the pen tool here at the top, click on the word fill and set it to none, click OK. Click on the word stroke, set it to solid color and click OK. And we can set the stroke size to 4. And what we're going to do here is we're going to from the center add a click a point and hold down shift on our keyboard and click and add another point. So now we'll have the straight line just like this. And here's what we have. And what we'll do here is we'll go into our shape layer one, go to add, and we're going to add a repeater. From here, we'll open up repeater one. We'll go into transform repeater one, come here to the X position and set it down to zero. And then we'll come here to rotation and we can rotate this. And then we'll come here to the anchor point Y, which is the second value. And we can increase the anchor point by a touch as well to about 100 and then we can increase the number of copies and now we have these lines here coming in from a circle perspective all right so from here what we're going to do is go to add again and we're going to add a trim paths we'll come into trim paths one and we'll bring the end down to zero percent then we'll add a keyframe for start and we'll move forward in time and we'll set the start up to 100 percent and then we'll go back to the beginning and then go forward by a few frames add a keyframe for end move past the last keyframe for start and we'll set the end up to 100 percent now we'll select all of our keyframes and hit F9 on our keyboard to make them easy ease keyframes. And now we have this line circle burst right here. And for good policy, what I suggest doing is hold down control on your keyboard and double click the pan behind tool so the anchor point will be in the center of your circle burst. This way when you duplicate it, you can easily scale this down and it'll animate from the center. So just keep that in mind. So now we have the essence of a circle burst, but now let's talk about creating short circular lines. And now we're going to create this consistent line circle just like this. And it's very easy to do. So what we'll do here is we can turn off our repeated circle for now. And we'll come here, grab the ellipse tool here at the top. And make sure the stroke is the only one that's selected. And we'll come here and hold down shift on keyboard to draw out a perfect circle. And then as always, control double click the pan behind tool so that anchor point is right in the center of our shape layer. And then we can center this in the center of our composition if you want. And from here we'll go to align and we're going to add trim paths. And we'll open up trim paths and we'll decrease the end all the way down to just a sliver of our circle like this. And that's fine. And now we just need to animate this. So we'll add a keyframe for end and we'll move this keyframe forward in time and set the end percent down to zero. Then we'll move forward in time as well and add a keyframe for start. Move forward past the last end keyframe and increase the start until the circle closes up on itself. And we'll make them all easy, easy keyframe. So now we should have something just like this. So make sure the trim paths is inside the ellipse one just by dragging it into the ellipse one. Then we go to edit duplicate. So we'll duplicate the ellipse one and now we have ellipse two. Go into the ellipse two, go into the trim paths and increase the offset. And this will allow us to create another sliver like this. Then we'll duplicate this again, the ellipse two, increase the offset and then we'll duplicate this and then we'll offset it one more time. So now there's four of these in here like so. And now what we'll do is hit R on our keyboard for rotation, go to the beginning of our timeline, add a keyframe for rotation, and move by and move forward in time, and then rotate this by a little bit. And now we have this animated circle like this. And now combined, we have something like so. And that looks pretty cool. There are so many different ways that you can create motion graphics and they're a lot of fun and sometimes it can take a lot of time. That's why I highly suggest taking a look at one of my favorite extensions for After Effects, which is called Toko, which has 1350 plus motion graphics for After Effects and it comes with its own user interface. Meaning that you can take these accent motion graphics, for example, at just a few hundred out of these 1350 elements, you can bring them into any After Effects project and enhance your work within a matter of a few clicks. And this pack Toko also ranges not just from motion graphics, but also has motion graphic titles, intros, you know, infographics, device screens, and so much more in this pack of 1,350 elements that you can bring into any After Effects composition. So if you want to learn more and start saving time, go ahead and check our links in the video description. So number three on our motion graphics list is my favorite technique, and this is a splode. 
All right, next up, we're gonna create the splode. So we'll grab the ellipse tool again, and this time we'll click on the word fill, and we'll set this to solid color, click okay, and we'll turn off the stroke. And we'll just draw out a circle like this. Of course, as always, double click the pan behind tool to make sure the anchor point is in the center of your circle. And now what we'll do is come to ellipse one, and we'll come here to the transform ellipse one, go to the beginning of our timeline, add a keyframe for scale, and we'll move this keyframe forward in time and set the scale down to 0%. So now you just get something like this. And we can increase this if we want and then make both keyframes easy. Ease keyframes by hitting F9 on your keyboard. Then what we're gonna do here is duplicate the ellipse one and hit U on your keyboard to bring up the keyframes and we can offset the keyframes for the ellipse one off by a few frames here. So now it should look something like this. Then we'll go back into our you know shape layer and we're gonna go to add and we're gonna add a merge path. Make sure the merge path is underneath the ellipse one and two and make sure that there's a fill here. And we'll go to the merge path one and we'll come here to subtract. So now we get this hollowed out circle and it'll basically just eat itself like that. And it's very important to make sure that you have your layout just like this or you will have problems with this technique. So make sure, so make sure at the top it's ellipse two, ellipse one and those keyframes offset just like that. And then you have the merge paths. The stroke you won't need that for this technique and then you just need to the fill there. And now you'll have a explode like this and it's pretty easy to do. And combined, we can be able to build assets kind of like this. Finally, on our list to conclude, our circle burst is a circular line path. And lastly, we have a animated circular line and we got a little bit of details in this one. So for example, we'll come here and grab the ellipse tool. And once again, we'll turn off the fill and turn on the stroke. And we'll draw out a straight circle like this. We'll down shift on your keyboard and make sure that anchor point is in the center of your circle. And then we'll come here to add and we'll add a trim paths. We'll open up trim paths one and we'll bring the end percent all the way down to 0%. Add a keyframe for start and end. And we'll bring the end forward in time by a little bit. We'll set the start to 100% and then we'll move forward a little bit further and set the end to, and we'll set it to 100% as well and make all the keyframes easy, easy keyframes. And now we have an animation like this. And what we can do further to make this a little bit more impressive is one, we can duplicate this layer and Come here to the top and increase the stroke width and then hit S on keyboard for scale and we can scale this up. So now we kind of have these double lines like this and it looks pretty cool. Of course, you can offset them in time or instead you can hit R on your keyboard for rotation and we can rotate these. And we can quickly duplicate this and build out a really unique sequence with this technique. And now altogether, we're able to build out a circle burst similar to this one. And now that all those elements are combined, we can bring them in individually, all these assets, duplicate them around our composition and animate full sequences just like this using these elements by themselves. And that's the whole purpose of this tutorial was being able to show a handful of techniques and showing you how you can build out larger compositions like this one. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this After Effects tutorial on creating circle bursts. I really love motion graphics and getting very specific with these sort of things. So be sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this. We do post two post-production tutorials every week right here on Sunduck Film. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creating.